questions lately about how I do my um, laminating. I know I've done like one quick kind of a video on it, but I just, I'm going to do another one. So I will be laminating a whole bunch of patterns and I'm going to face all of my pattern pieces face down because I don't want anyone to see any of the measurements. That's just something that I do. So, hey, achoo! excuse me. So I have, this is the A5 or Z2, I don't know, whatever, A3 laminating pouches and they come in like a packet like this but in the same box I've also put a bunch of A4s so that I can just grab this one thing and do some laminating. So I like to start with all the bigger pieces uh, because I played, I literally am just going to play Tetris. So I put in the biggest pieces first um, and I can already tell that these aren't going to fit in an A4 so I don't even bother trying. Right, so that now only comes to here and I've got all this excess. So I like to laminate bulk patterns at once because I find it much, much easier. Um, but basically what I start doing is I start playing Tetris with all the biggest pieces. Now that would have been too big. So I went to the next biggest piece that I had. And so that piece I'm just gonna put in by itself. I've got it round the wrong way. I want them to fall off the table. So I can literally, now that I've got it set up here, they're going to feed in and then fall off the table on the other side. So I'm going to take, I've got a lot of big pieces in this pattern, so I'm going to do the bigger ones first. So while that one's feeding through, I'm going to grab this piece, which is like the main panel of tomorrow's video, funnily enough. Now, if you need to do any of the, the writing, so I have, I'm going to cover it, but I have actually written all of the straps and um, straight pieces that you have to measure. So I've actually put that on the pattern already to make it easier. So now the instructions that I need are laminated in. You can also just write on top of them with a, like a Sharpie or a permanent texter. The problem I have with that is that it does wear off. Okay, so these two I'm going to add a third piece in between here. And that one looks good to me. So I'm going to put it in one side first and I'm going to get it pretty close to the other one and then we open up this side and feed it through that. Now you want to make sure that it's overlapping a little bit in the center and then to stop that moving while it's going through the machine, I'm actually going to use some sticky tape. So I just need to move this over just a smidgen because the edge is popping out this end there. So now we grab some double-sided tape, or not some double-sided tape, sorry, some sticky tape. And I'm just going to stick both sides together so that it's not going to move. Like so. And I'll flip it back over. Now, I always want the piece that's on the outside to go in first. If I was to put it the other way, there's a good chance that this would move, get jammed, and wreck everything. Then you've got to reprint it. So I will be putting it in with the side on top with the open edge facing away from the machine. And then you want to try and feed it in as straight as you can. They do have a little bit of leeway each side of the machine, but if you feed it in crooked, it eventually just moves over and over and over and will wreck like one whole side, which is not what we want. Okay, so I've still got some more big pieces, so I'm going to stick with my A3s for now. I possibly only need one more A3. And usually I've got this machine like way over there. It's actually pretty much where the camera is sitting. I like to spread out when I'm doing this and I like to do more than one pattern at a time. So I will spend like a day printing and laminating and cutting and all that kind of stuff. Just so I can then just have it done and it's done. I've actually got quite a lot of stuff here I want to be doing. So I'm going to wait till that feeds through and then I'm going to put this one in and then we're going to go to pattern that I've got here. 
because you may as well hang out with me while I'm doing this. Um, you can also stack them up. So I can now come and grab a smaller one and start with some smaller pieces. The problem is, is you get a little bit carried away and then you have a pile of them. And if they shift, then you gotta go back and fix them. So if you're finding that you're having trouble with stuff staying in there, you can actually take a piece of sticky tape and sticky tape it to the inside, right? So that's now sticky tape there, so it's not gonna move. So when you've got a lot of little pieces like this, which is a pattern piece, to make sure that they're not going to move, I will actually come and just put tiny bits of sticky tape to tack them to the inside. So we're onto a different pattern at the moment, but I've just got three pieces in here. Then this big one's nearly finished, uh, and it will fall to the floor, and I can put the next one in. Now, I'm not worried about this moving or slipping, even though it's little, because I have tacked it down in place. So sticky tape on the inside won't wreck the, the melting of the glue or anything, so they will still laminate. It's just to hold everything in place. Alright, so I'm going to... Now that I've done a couple of those little pieces, I've got this really big piece here. Um, and I'm actually going to need the big A3s for how long it is. So I'm going to pop it in the end like so. And again, if I want to, I can tack this down because obviously I'm going to have a lot of space to put a lot of other things. So I may want to just tack it in place. Pop the next one in. It's a bit of a juggling game between putting them in and prepping them. And that just doesn't fit there. So we'll pop this one in. And then we need another little piece. What else have I got lying around here? Oh, I haven't cut the rest of them out. All right. So this is going to have another two big ones back to back, but this piece doesn't allow for this piece to come in. But I can put that one there. And then I've got another pattern here. So I'm not telling you any of these patterns because you'll find out once I do the videos. Alright, so that's pretty much all I can put in there. I've got a bit of space here, but that's going to be used up hopefully when I put the other end of this double one on. So it's pretty much just a game of Tetris. So I'm going to open this up. I want to overlap it just a little bit. Now I could move it all the way up, but then I won't get as many of the next lot of pieces in here. So that's why I'm not doing that. And then I'm going to take that in place. So now it won't move. And then come and grab some of these bigger pieces. So this piece, nope, will almost fit here, but not quite. It just overlaps in that corner, which is no good to me. But this piece will fit. And then this one can go here, and suddenly I'm not wasting as much as we thought we were going to. This one can go there, and look. So because I've cut out so many patterns, I've now wasted none of that corner like I thought I was going to have to. Now normally I do this with the pattern side facing up. Uh, I'm just not because I don't want to give away any of the pattern pieces. And there's right on this join that we've got right here, oh, I reckon this one will fit there. Look at that. That's not bad. What's this piece? I'll fit that in too, but because that's a little piece, I'm going to tape across that way so that all of those stay in place. Now that is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine pieces in there. That's um, half of like two patterns. And then again, so we want to make sure that we're going to tape this down and then the top flap is always pointing away from the machine. 
or the outside flap. And then in it goes. Um, and so from there, I will just create a big messy pile on the floor. I'm not even going to lie. It goes on the floor. Uh, and then I will grab my zipper cutting scissors and my paper. So these are my zipper, paper, and plastic scissors. Um, and then I will cut them all up, put a hole punch in the corner, and then add them to these little things like this. So this is one of the patterns I'm going to be doing this week. Um, so they get these little card hooks. And I just use like a normal, I think it was $2 from Kmart Hole Punch. Um, where's it gone? Here it is. Right. So it's just a cheap hole punch. Nothing fancy. It catches all the stuff on the inside. Uh, and I just hole punch this. It can do the one laminated layer no problem. It'll even do over the, the double layered bit. But you don't put two full pieces in and try and do them at the same time. It's not an expensive one, so I don't think it'll hack that for very long. But yeah, so that is how I laminate. I'm actually going to turn it off and keep going because I've got, I've got another three or four patterns printed out. Here's one, so I need to cut and sticky tape all the pieces together before I can laminate. Um, but yeah, I hope this was helpful, guys. And if not, sorry, I did try to be helpful. So until next time, or well, the next video is going to be one of these things that I'm laminating now.